<laughs> well, uh, I've been in emergency management about uh, 17 years now. I don't know if I could admit that length of time, but I've been in there for 17 years. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration. And I actually started in emergency management from the ground up. I started as a program assistant for emergency management. I then went to the coordinator position, and now I made the director. Probably about four years now I've been the director. But I wanted to tell you my philosophy for Aries Racies and emergency management. I said that we are each other's best friend before, during, and after a disaster. And in emergency management, it's a discipline of dealing with and avoiding risks. And there are five phases to emergency management. There's um, prevention, preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. Um, prevention actions are taken to avoid an incident or to stop an incident from happening. Uh, prevention is more from a law enforcement standpoint for a terrorism attack, like those wonderful uh, uh, airport screenings that we have to go through. That's more of a prevention um, incident as far as emergency management is concerned. We're in support of that function, but it really isn't a function of emergency management. Like I said, it generally belongs to law enforcement um, discipline. Uh, preparedness, of course, uh, increases the uh, community's ability to respond when a disaster occurs. Uh, typical preparedness measures include developing mutual aid agreements, working with memorandums of understanding, having an emergency operations plan or a continuity of operations plan, uh, training with volunteer agencies, first responders and volunteers, like for um, Aries Races, you're talking about your field days that you have in June, you have your set um, exercise that you have in October. We're going to be doing what Dan had talked about as a SIMCOM exercise the end of May. And the SIMCOM exercise is a, it's a communication exercise. Um, we're going to assemble several different communication agencies throughout the state of Wisconsin. They're all going to bring their communication trailers with them. There is going to be a uh, communication structure that each individual is going to be identified in four separate pod areas. And Aries Races will be in one of those pod areas. They're going to be given um, directions on sending certain messages to certain frequencies. Uh, and the, of course, the end result is that those frequencies or those messages that you've sent get to their appointed destination. Now, it sounds easier than it is, um, especially when you get all those communications together and all those frequencies that are flying around. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm glad that you guys are going to participate. I'm really very excited about it, and I think it's going to be great fun. Um, I hope to have our um, ACU 2000 there. I'm getting a brand new laptop for the ACU 2000, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have it placed into the back of a van, so it's going to be mobile. So we'll just drive the van over there. We can utilize the ACU, you can test the ACU, you can play with the ACU, um, check to see what you need to do with that. I would love to get it to you before the um, SIMCOM exercise. I'm not sure about that. Um, as Dan knows, we've been trying to do this for quite some time. So I'm hopefully that we're in the very, very close, uh, close race as far as getting it accomplished. Preparedness also includes family preparedness. One of my biggest issues or my biggest goals is to get families prepared, individuals prepared for, fa for a disaster. Um, being a, a part of Aries Races, being a part of uh, a first response agency, if you will, um, if you're not prepared, your family's not prepared, then it's difficult for you to respond to an incident also. They say that a family should be able to take care of itself for at least 72 hours after disaster happens before help might arrive. So um, it's my big push that I try to get people to have a family disaster preparedness kit in their basements or in their safe areas, and then also have some sort of a, a plan in place on what their family will do during times of a disaster. So that's a big push for mine for prevention or preparedness as far as, especially for first responders. Again, if your family is not taken care of, you're not going to be able to respond. You can't respond, then you know what are we going to do? So that's a big part of my, my plan, too, is for preparedness. Response actions are carried out immediately after a disaster has happened, um, saving lives, reducing economic loss, uh, alleviating suffering. You know, some response actions would be me opening the emergency operations center. We have the emergency operations center. When we had the 2008 flooding, we had Aries Races in the, in the emergency operations center. When we had our vigilant guard exercise, 
We had them in the um, emergency operations center. We even did some improvements to the emergency operations center, I guess if you would say, to accommodate uh, having Aries Races in our, uh, our center. We have put a conduit through the wall so that you can filter your, your uh, cables through the conduit in the wall so you can hook up to your radios and stuff right in the emergency operations center. So, and then with the cabinet that um, Stan was talking about, I think that will be a great addition also. Uh, to your response with the Emergency Operations Center, and we'll do some rearranging of people too to make things a little bit easier for you. Um, evacuating threatened populations, opening shelters, uh, that's part of uh, what Aries Races might be utilized for also. Um, when we open shelters, they're going to need to talk to each other. I think that's another function that we might utilize um, Aries Races for. Uh, providing mass care or emergency rescue and medical use. Um, the other uh, phase is recovery, and of course recovery is taken to return a community back to as near normal po uh, circumstances as possible. Um, restoration of public services, repair of physical and social and economic damages, recovery actions like debris cleanup, uh, financial assistance to individuals and their governments, uh, rebuilding of roads and bridges, and then sustaining mass care for displaced persons. Uh, and then, of course, one of the biggest things that has been out there in the news is not only displaced persons, but also animals. Um, Red Cross open shelters. People can go to those shelters. Animals are not allowed in those shelters. People love their pets. I love my dog. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to be without my dog, so I would. that's part of the family plan is to make sure that we have some place for them to go also. And it, it really is a concern from an emergency management standpoint because you have to take care of those things. Mitigation. Um, mitigation is what you're going to do to prevent a disaster from happening or to reduce the effects of a disaster. Mitigation for Jefferson County, we've been working on a, um, a flood mitigation program where we actually, through grant program, grant funding, we acquire properties in the floodplain, we relocate the owners and we destroy those structures. Then if a flood comes again, those, those people are never affected again in that flooded area. We've been doing this since about 1993. I've acquired and demolished about 98 structures, and through grant funding I've spent about $17 million. So that's probably the biggest mitigation project that we've been working on for quite some time. Um, and I believe that uh, Aries Races should be involved in all of those phases of emergency management uh, and recognizes a valuable member of the emergency management team. I know that's how I feel, and I'm, I'm very grateful for having the, the teams that we have in Jefferson County for Aries Races and the cooperation and the, the willingness to participate uh, for Jefferson County is, uh, is a great asset. Uh, and I know that from my standpoint with regards to other emergency managers, that's a, that's a shining star in my crown to have uh, people like you work with the emergency management and be so readily available. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Thank you. Question. Yes. Can you kind of give us an outline as of to, I guess I've been getting a lot of questions and I'm not 100% sure as of the what we're really going to be. Okay, we're going to be at uh, Simcom starting on Wednesday or on thir Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Right. And, and we're going to be there. So our purpose there is just to kind of keep an eye on the place and then report in with the, the authorities on right. a regular basis, right? Yep. We're going to have there, are, as far as I'm understanding right now, I'm going to have at least two or three trailers that will come in the night before. Okay. And they'll park out in their designed areas in the parking area of the um, uh, fair park. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the fair park, but it would be the north end parking lot okay. is where we're going to set up. So it'll be right next to the horse barns and things like that. So that's where we're going to set up. So there's going to be two or three trailers that are going to come the night before. So you'll come that evening, spend the night there, and then I'm, I'm assuming that you're going to be participating during the day also. Correct. So, Correct. And I have to get confirmation if we will have one unit of Aries Races in one of the pods or the divisions or do we have three units in each one of the divisions because there's four divisions. So and I'm not sure if we need um, Aries Races talking from one division to the other division and then back and forth and sending 
your technical information or you know how whatever the uh, command structure is going to tell you that you need to do. So that's the confirmation that I've got to make right now, and I'm not sure if you're prepared to do that. Well, I just kind of, the more I know, the better volunteered I can be. Right, right. <laughs> so, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, from, a, from a, a communication standpoint, it makes sense to me to have, each, to have one in each division. You know, that way you can communicate with each other mm -hmm. in regards to your, the structure that they're going to be throwing out frequencies to you and um, they're going to be throwing out messages to you that you're supposed to transmit to somebody. You know, and of course, they, like I said, the end result is that you get those messages to the appointed destination. Sure. Uh, well, okay, you, you don't know a lot about the communications, what, what kind, what I mean, be, well, no, I don't, okay. frequencies, we can become available. Well, like last year when we were there, we actually talked to emergency management, but they were just across the, they were just across the way there. But uh, you know, we sure can. We can talk all the way across the state right. if we I need to. So, that. are you going to have like some long distance things that that you want us? So, I mean, I can prepare for that. That's entirely up to you. Okay. I guess if you want to incorporate that into your plan or into your your um, like when we were roving with with Paul. If you want to incorporate something like that in your plan, that's perfectly fine. And I think that'll help bolster sure. the, the whole program that we're working with that day. Okay. So um, that's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's never, this is the first time it's been outside of Dane County. Um, it's been held in Dane County for the last three years. So this is the first county, I'm the first county to take it outside of Dane County. So we're kind of the guinea pig to see how it's going to operate. Great. So basically, we're going to be there roughly, what, 6 o'clock on uh, Thursday night or what time? You, I guess I'm looking for some rough times. I think 6 o'clock would six, work. And, yeah. and then the, the actual function, though, starts what, from about 8 till 3 yep. uh, on the following day, right. Thursday the 31st yep. is, is what it is. Right, yeah. And, and by about 3 o'clock, it's pretty well winding down and, and yeah, going Yeah, we're going to have people start arriving around 8 o'clock, actually. Okay. And the function, I think, is going to start about 9. Okay. So we'll, get, we'll try to get everybody set up and ready within that hour period of time. Okay. And then, well, one other question, and I, I know I've asked this a couple of times, and I don't know whether I need to get it with Todd or with you, but uh, we, through the courtesy of Jefferson Emergency Management, we have some public service radios, but we've never talked to anybody on those. Okay. And from what I understand, and for someone to talk to us, they need to know we're supposed to be talking to them. And I don't know if we need a tactical call or anything like that. How does that work and who, who, who helps us with that? So we're not asked to do something and don't even have any, I mean, I would like to, before we talk to somebody on your radios, for example, I want to make sure that we know what we're supposed to do so we come across professional and doing it right. So, uh, you know, a little training would probably go a long way if there would be something available oh, I understand. Uh, and then plus if we got you know procedures and calls or whatever that we're supposed to do so that they know we're supposed to talk to them and we know where it's okay to talk to people you know well, and that's <laughs> fine and what they're going to do is they're going to give out and and this is something that you can probably do in advance and I certainly will talk to Todd about seeing if we can get something set up with that and then the day of the exercise they'll have um, uh, a brief overview of what's going to occur and and how you're supposed to be performing. Um, and I don't think it's going to be anything that's, that's horrific that you're not used to doing to begin with or anything like that. We're not going to try to surprise you or trip you up with anything. Um, we want it to go as smoothly as possible. But then if we do have some issues, I would like to know them too so we can work on them as, as much as possible also. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm thinking you should be getting as much information um, as prior to the event um, and as soon as I get that, and I'll get it, <coughs> I'm supposed to get the, the manual by the 9th, which is tomorrow. We have to get it printed, and so I should be able to get that to you well in advance of, of the exercise itself. Good, okay. And that should be helpful to you. So, but I will certainly talk with Todd about that and try to see if we can get some information back to you before the exercise. Anybody else have any questions for Donna? Who's all going to be able to come to SimCon? Okay. Good. I mean, I I know it's a work day. It, you know, you're going to be there. I told there. you I'd be there during yeah. the day. So. And, and and so it's a little tough for some people. I know. And then uh, I'm going to plan on being one of the overnight shift. Uh, Denny said he would do the overnight shift, 
and uh, anybody that wants to anybody who wants to spend the night with us, we love to uh, have party party all night. How much what kind of room have we got there? Do we want to pull in? We can go for resting in. Would, would we have would we have room for if, for our overnight shift to bring a like part There's next to our trailer if we would bring a little a camper or something sure. so we could. Uh, you know, I don't know how you got it laid out there for that, but so we got to, if we want to, you know, get a couple hours of Z's and somebody oh, no, shifts got, off on that, that yep, would be good. Yep, they've got they've got camping areas there at the fair park, so okay, you, you can could, you can set up a camp. We could plug in. Yeah, they've got a, a place for campers to set up right at the fair park. Then we can, okay. Guys can take break from even during the day. That'd be good. That'd be good. Let me know where it is so I can take a break too. <laughs> well, in your sheds out there all winter. So. <laughs> so even if you can't make it during the during the Simcom exercise itself, if you want to come and visit us after six o'clock on you know Wednesday night, and uh, even if it's only for an hour, what the heck, you know, stop on out and see what it's all about. Anyways, it might be a little slow for starting, but uh, we'll. Uh, you know, we'll be there for the whole thing. Like I said, uh, everything continues to work. I like to have, uh, we'll probably do a live video feed from there for the most of it. Uh, not that, I don't know what we're going to see, but uh, we'll try. <laughs> well, and I don't know when you say stop on out, I don't know what that means. Well, I'm, our people here to stop and see us in our... In our we're going to be locked. The, the fairgrounds is going to be locked down. Okay, well, see, I didn't know that. Okay. So so um, once you guys are there, you're stuck. We're stuck. <laughs> you're stuck. You're stuck. You're not, you're not <laughs> you getting out, out anywhere. Okay, um, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Well, that's that good. I didn't there. know that, so now I know that. Yep, it's going to be, all the gates are going to be locked down within the fair park, so nobody will be able to get in. Okay. Is and is that over the night or during the whole thing for the whole day? Over the night, and then during the day, one gate will be open. The entrance, the main entrance gate will be open, and then you'll come in there. It'll be a staging area. You're going to get registered. You're going to get wristbanded, and then you're going to be a, a, a told where your appointed destination is according to where the pods are. If you don't stop out and see us in physical, then call us on the radio. That they can't lock us up. <laughs> um, the day of the exercise is going to be very regimented, okay. it's going to be very um, by the book. Um, you're going to be brought in, you're going to be registered, you're going to be wristbanded, Great. you're going to be sent to your division, and um, we'll take off from there. So, um, Sounds interesting. Lunch is provided, um, we'll have a good day, and I think it'll go real well. Looking one, forward to it. One question for you. Um, I know we talked about the past coming up with some sort of little credential tags or something, or is that something? It's still something that we can do for uh, Aries races, and I apologize. I, uh, you did bring that up once before, or okay. maybe twice before. Okay. Um, uh, but it is something. In fact, what we can do is I can even talk to the, um, the gentleman, the uh, Waukesha County, their incident management team is actually going to be doing our, our credentialing for us when we get at the uh, exercise. They're going to be they're doing the registration and the, and the wristbands. So what I can do is I can talk to them too to see if we can work off some credentialing too. If they got their camera there, um, we can do some of the credentialing of the individuals that are going there. See if we can get that taken care of. Great. Great. So that's a that's a good thing for me to remember. Mm -hmm. Dan, yes. I've got SimCon. What uh, frequencies do you use? Well, I don't have the whole plan, but we'll be on our repeater too. I mean, you know. Plus all the other radios. Yeah, yeah. Is so, this the ones you use with the police or radio? Well, or we'll different? be talking amongst ourselves. I'm okay. sure part of that. You know, most of the part what Aries Racies does is one ham talks to another ham, passing information for a third okay. party. You know, but we do have the capabilities. Uh, we have a high band and a low band public service radio that I've got put in the trailer. I now have antennas for all that stuff and, and all that. So, uh, which 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 will allow us to talk to and will if we if, if, use if that right if we well that's what I was saying as long as we get trained in how to do it the proper okay. procedures. But if we have to, I mean. It's really convenient if we're supporting a function and the, the police department is driving by on the road and you can't wave them down when you're going by. Maybe you can call them on the radio, you know. Right. And plus, uh, plus it'll also give us the, the low band radio gives us the ability to talk to JCEC, which is uh, you know for those who don't know JCEC is a 
volunteer. Jefferson County Emergency Communications. Yes, volunteer organizations similar to what we're doing there, and they got their own radio and frequency, and we actually worked Ride to Rock with them a couple of years ago, yeah. and I had to call my brother on the cell phone to tell him we were coming to cross the, uh, the street with the race because so uh, we had no way of communicating those. with them at that point. So uh, mm -hmm. there's a possibility now we could say, okay, we're coming up the highway, seven, you know, whatever, we're there with because we're running the race, and, okay. and then they were going to stand there and block the road. We had no way, we were race lead, and we had no way of telling them we were coming, were coming up so up. they could block the road so that the race could go right across, you know. Then you just need to know what frequencies that they're working off of. Right, well, and I can find that out and coordinate that. So and the low band, the VHF. Yeah, well, that was that 40, 30, 49, 48 megahertz or whatever 30, 50, that is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what they'll do is they'll do a, it's an ICS form, a 205 form, which is the frequencies that will be used during the exercise. So you'll be able to have that 205 form telling you who's using what frequencies. Mm -hmm. Good. So that'll help you also. Excellent. So. It'll, it'll be a, a first for a lot of us. Yeah, well, that's good. We mm -hmm. We talk a lot about ICS 100 or the ICS on our weekly nuts that we have. We've been going, we've been reviewing the ICS stuff, okay. and I got a really good turn. I would say I got very, very good sense. Uh, people are studying and getting their certifications on that. So uh, I've got, I would say, 99% of everybody that participates in this stuff now or, or wants to participate already has that. So real good. So it's kind of nice to putting it into practical use. Well, I know that you talked about utilizing ICS-100 and the IS-700. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, the, the ICS-200 and the IS-800 are also still online courses. Right, right. You know, and so, so those need to be done. They can be done online. You don't have to worry about taking a class for those. So Is that becoming a requirement now, to have 200 and 800? It's not a requirement. It's what your needs are as far as ICS is concerned. If you have the 100 and the 700, you should be able to plug yourself into the incident command system right. during a disaster. But 200, of course, just expands on that. 800 expands on the, the uh, IS 700 course for the oh, okay. National Incident Management System. So basically, they're recommended. They're recommended. Okay. Yeah. Well, they keep changing, you know, what they want for for uh, mandatory and and not mandatory. That's why I was just curious if they were going to become mandatory or not. I um I try not to push people too hard on too many training uh, options because it does kind of bog you down a little bit. You know, I'm happy if you do 100 and 700. It is 200 and 800 are recommended simply because they are online. You don't have to go to a class for those. You don't have to, you know, take too many time, too much time out of your schedule to accomplish those. You can do them at home or whatever. But I got a question. Those ones that are um, not not online but that are actual classroom. Where do they do? What's the closest place they do those? Well. They do them all different times in all different places. So the ICS 300 class or the ICS 400 class, it depends on, you know, sometimes they come up. I, if you want me to get some information to you, I can do sure. that on where they're located because I think an ICS 300 class is like three days. Um, but they're up all over the place. So sometimes they're yeah. in Fort McCoy, sometimes they're in, you know, Waukesha, sometimes right. they're you know, so like in the evening, like at some tech school kind of deal, or it, it can be in the evening. Sometimes, sure. generally, at times it's during the day because right. most first responders work during the you know their daily activities would allow them. That's to why a lot of those aren't required of us because right. we're a volunteer basis there. But and it's if you want to do it, it's great. Yeah, I'll meet with you meeting. after the meeting then and okay. um, see what we can come yeah, up with. Yeah, if you give me some of your information, you and if I find anything, that I can certainly pass it on. Sure, to you. I appreciate that. That'd Thanks. be great.